All right, hello everyone. This is Lisa again, and this is my fourth attempt at doing this Facebook Live this afternoon. Started at 3 o'clock and talked for 21 minutes before I read some messages that my voice was coming through like chipmunks which occasionally happens, and then when I dial back in, it um, fixes it, but I've done it three times now on my desktop, and it's still wonky. So I'm trying it on my phone now so that I can share this helpful information for those of you who are new to working from home, and uh, looks like you're going to have to do that for the foreseeable future. <clears throat> And so what I need to do is anybody who's live right now, see I have one eyeball on, on this video live. If you can please tap in, type in and let me know if you can hear me. Oops. Let me know if you can hear me. And I'm going to type in case you can't. Hard to do this while holding the phone and the camera going. <clears throat> okay. So, yay, it's working now. Thank you, Sue. Appreciate that. Oh my gosh. Technology is uh, is our savior right now, but it, only when it's working well. Uh, so, <clears throat> thank you and and welcome Sue and anybody else that's on right now. Um, uh, so I started this at three o'clock and was talking for about twenty one minutes, and um, before I realized uh, and read some of the comments that people couldn't hear what I was saying, I was coming through as a chipmunk. So I'm going to start over again, but I learned from that first one uh, where I kind of got astray, a, a and so I really want to tighten this up and make this useful, repost it later. So if you're watching it now and you have comments, uh, I'm not sure how they're going to come through with the... Okay, uh, so if you have any comments, uh, any questions, then... Uh, type them in, but I won't answer them until the end because it'll be a little bit too challenging for me to stop and answer a question and continue on, uh, unless it's something really brief um, that I think will be valuable. So type it, and if I feel like I can answer it at the time, I will. Otherwise, I'll answer it at the end, and if it can't stay on until I finish, then know that the recording will be up when I'm done. And... I'll, I'll read your question and I'll answer it in the video so you can always come back to it. So I, what I want to cover today for those of you who are new from working, uh, new to working from home because of the situation going on right now out there in this crazy world, uh, hopefully this information will be helpful for you to be able to uh, work efficiently from home, get done what you need and want to. Uh, with your work <clears throat> and whether you're working for an employer or whether this is your own work but but you're not used to working from home doing it. Just remember that whether it's you or whether it's your employer that you are being paid to work and to get a job done and to have certain output so that that business can stay in business, right? So ultimately, you are a part of contributing to that business being successful, no matter what role you're is, your what role you have in the company. And it's more apparent when it's your own company, right? But uh, sometimes people don't think when you're an employee about the impact that with the work that you do and what you're getting paid to do right now is having on that business surviving. Uh, so if you are lucky enough to be in a paid position and you're still able to work and still able to, um, you know, bring in some income, 
then you really need to make sure you're doing your job, you are being efficient, and you are producing what that employer needs you to so that they can survive and they can continue to keep your job for you and 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 your your other uh, co-workers and they can survive through this because there's a lot of companies that are not going to be able to survive um, especially the generally the smaller they are <clears throat> okay so there's three things that I want to cover today and these uh, uh, environment management time management and thought management and what I'm sharing with you is based on my own experience and my trial and error from having worked at home for myself for 13 years. So I'm going to share some of the things that I think are more most important right off the bat. And just also know that there's going to be a learning curve to this. There's only so much information I can share with you on this uh, short tutorial. <clears throat> and, and so, you know, start with that. I'm going to cover what I think is, is going to be the most beneficial and relevant for you right now. But this is trial and error. So you're going to be finding out things. You're going to be applying things, trying things out, seeing how it works, keep what works, tweak what it, what doesn't work. Uh, you know, you're going to need to make adjustments uh, over time as you're getting more information about how you're utilizing, you know, the, the resources and the, and the tactics that you're using. All right, so let's kind of dive in. Environment management, uh, thinking about your space, making sure that you're creating space that is conducive to you being efficient, productive, focused instead of distracted, uh, that you're, you've got what you need to support you in the work that you need to do. Now, some of you might be able to have a, a dedicated workspace that you don't have to clear off at least, you know, once a day to like, you know, if you're working at the kitchen table or the dining room table and then you have to clear it off, you know, when mealtime comes, whether that's once, twice, three times a day. Uh, so you need to think about that, you know, is, is your office have to be movable uh, throughout the day or do you have a dedicated workspace? It's a little bit easier if you can find a dedicated workspace in your home and especially one that has a boundary point, say a door that you can shut. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. So you've got to create um, a conducive workspace, keep it clutter free however you can. And, you know, if you're working with a computer, make sure you find a place where you can set all of that stuff up, all that equipment and, um, you know, a phone if you've got a landline or whether you're working from your cell phone. All right. So well, try to create a dedicated space if you can't um, or if you've got really small space, just uh, bring into your space what you need to use at any moment in time. Keep other things elsewhere. Uh, so, you know, it might be files or, or you know, uh, other, other things that you might need to use for your work. Keep them out if you're not using them. Uh, if you've got files and you, you need to take care of files and pull from files, uh, you might not have like a filing cabinet or, or want to, you know, go out and get a filing cabinet. So what you could do is, is uh, get a, a movable filing cabinet and you m might be okay with just one. You might need to get numerous ones of these, but at, at the like Target, at the, at the, you know, store, you can, office stores, you can buy one of these um, uh, like plastic storage bin kinds of things that are specifically made to accommodate hanging file folders. And, and you can get those hanging file folders and you can label them and you can get your, you know, your regular sort of um, manila kind of folders here and label those. And you can put them in that box and file them as you need to and then close the lid when you need to transport them, close that lid and then just carry it to, to where you need it to go. Um, let's see. If... If possible, you can be in a space where you can close a door. That's great because you've got to you've got to figure out like your office hours, and I'll talk more about that when I go into time. But you've got to set some boundaries wherever you can create physical, actual physical boundary points that are closing off your your workspace, your office space. If you have a door, that's great. You can close it when you're needing to be focused in work, and I and I would suggest doing that any you know, whenever you're, you're doing these work hours, but also put a sign on the door just to remind people, because 
you know, they're not used to you working from home either. And, and whether it's a child or an adult, oftentimes they get into this mind frame, oh, you're home, you know, I can go talk to them or, or ask them for something or, or, you know, I'm bored and I want to, you know, want somebody else to entertain me. So you need to be really clear and have the conversations with everybody in your household about not, you know, not disturbing you, that you are working. And, and so, you know, you can put up a sign on the door, you can remind them what your office hours are, what your work hours are, do not disturb, you can put, you know, um, not available till one o'clock if, you know, that's going to be your lunch time, whatever you need to do, but put something on the door to remind people to not disturb you unless it's one of the things that you've clarified and all talked about and decided is an actual, um, uh, plausible, excusable um, situation that uh, they can disturb you. And again, you're going to have to have more than one conversation about this uh, to, to retrain people. If you don't have a physical space like that, or you don't have a doorway, you don't have a door that you can close, if you can find something you can put in a barrier space, like an entryway, maybe there's not a door, but there is some kind of doorway or, or entry space. If you can put something there as a reminder and maybe put a sign there. Hey, if you've got one of those stand-up vacuum, upright vacuum cleaners, just pull the vacuum cleaner over to some place there where you can hang a sign from it and say work zone, do not disturb or something like that. And that, you know, that can remind them. Uh, if you don't even have something like that, then what you might do, again, this, this could be good for kids, and this is something that I did in college with my college roommates because there was three of us living in a small room, and sometimes, you know, we just needed to be really focused and study on something, or maybe we were just in a bad mood and didn't want anybody to talk to us. So I had this red, um, we call it the red cape, but it was actually a, tie, a side tie. Uh, red skirt that was from a Parisian dancer outfit that I had from a costume in high school. Uh, maybe you've got a superhero costume at home. It might have been your kids or might have been yours. And, you know, it's got a cape, right? You can bring that. Put the cape on. Everybody knows when you have the cape on, you are not to be disturbed. Don't talk to me. Just pretend like I'm not even here. Unless, again, it's one of those true emergency kinds of situations like somebody's bleeding, somebody's unconscious, the house is on fire. All right. Other than that, they got to learn how to take care of things themselves. Uh, make sure there's consequences, especially for the kids, to them not honoring that. Again, you've got to retrain them. They've got to know consequences. And... Uh, and then you have to follow through on those consequences if you say this is what's going to happen if you don't honor this. And uh, and then you have to, you know, you have to make sure that they pay those consequences, okay? If it's a significant other, it's an adult, and they're not getting it, then, again, you got to have that conversation with them. So uh, we need to adjust things, right? You know, you, you've got you've to stand firm. You've got to set those boundaries, for your work situation so you can get the work done that you need to. And then, you know, creating the same kind of situation for your kids and their, their homeschooling. Um, uh, you know, this is a time for them to learn about boundaries and learn about staying focused and learning self-management and self-responsibility. So, you know, there's good things coming out of this crisis and we, we want to focus on what are some things that maybe you know, we haven't learned or, or um, our kids haven't learned that this is giving us an opportunity to learn it and to practice it and to, to um, improve with it and to grow from it. Okay, so let's move on. That was a little bit about thought management, <laughs> mindset management. But um, uh, make sure that you, well, no, I want to go over that with time that uh, you are only focusing on work during your work hours, that you have separate time for doing your house chores, your housework. So after this, this time of day or before this time of day is, is my personal time, and then you can choose what you're doing in that personal time, do not be doing house chores. Also, look at distractions around you. TV, for example, 
should not be having the TV on while you're working. It's distracting. You're not going to be able to be focused. If it's if somebody else watching the TV, now again, you got to put some boundaries around that TV time, especially with your kids. They're home. They're going to want to turn on that TV, but you've got to make sure it stays off. Say only TV time between this time and this time of day. If for some reason you can't monitor or you can't do that, maybe you've got younger kids or it's a little bit later in the day and you're still working, but they're done with their work or whatever, then maybe those headsets, those Bluetooth headsets, which normally I don't recommend because of the EMFs going into your head. But if you, if, you know, for the time being, maybe you need to rely on those so that they can hear what's on the TV, but you don't have to hear it. Um, turning the volume down, possibly, if, uh, if they need to watch it to just not disturb you. Uh, but whenever possible, don't have the TV on and don't have it on for you and don't have CNN or anything like that playing in the background because you're, you're not going to be focused and it's stressing you whether you recognize it or not, it's going to be stressing you. Uh, other distractions, your cell phone. So make sure your cell phone is on silent, not vibrate, silent. You don't need to be checking it every five minutes might be used to doing that. Maybe you've been doing that during the day while you're at work, right? But you're not being paid to be on your cell phone and checking your, you know, what your friend is sending you or, or whatever. So be responsible. Put that aside. Don't have it as an appendage. Turn, turn you know, turn it off or turn, turn uh, the volume off and be focused on your work. Maybe have a great, you know, you're going to check it every hour. No more than every hour. Nothing is is going to be that much of a catastrophe in an hour from the last time that you checked it. <clears throat> uh, so the other thing is email. Don't continually go in, especially if you're working on your computer. Um, make sure that there's no no signal that tells you you have a new email coming in, like a like a sound that goes off or something that flashes on your screen. Don't get distracted by that. Turn off any of those things that might uh, sound off or, or the, a visual that might pop up. Just clear all of that out. Make sure that you can stay focused. And your email, only check it a certain number of times a day. You don't have to be checking it every couple of minutes, just like you don't have to be checking your phone every couple of minutes. And you can even create an auto responder, uh, uh, auto response in your email so that when somebody emails you, it emails them back saying, we received your email, we check our email, or I check my email between this time and this time. <clears throat> so um, if it's, you know, three times a day, say, okay, I check my emails first thing in the morning at 9 a.m., uh, I check it at 1, and then I check back at 5. Right. And and so if people know that you're you've got scheduled times to check your email, they're less likely to keep trying to interrupt you or they, you know, you didn't answer my email. So I decided to call. Let people know. Right. When they can expect that you're going to possibly see their message, when they can expect when you're going to possibly be able to reply to their message. So it might be, you know, 20. We reply within 24 hours unless it's this kind of situation. If it's a true emergency, you can call again just because the phone rings doesn't mean you have to answer it. And again, if you have it on silent, you don't. But you check it, you know, maybe at those times so you say that you're going to check it and then see if something's a true emergency. Uh, or time sensitive that you do need to respond back to when you respond back in the time frame that you you told people. So as long as people know that you've seen you've seen their message, uh, that you're checking your messages at a certain time, and that you can expect a reply at a certain time, then they're generally going to be more lenient or or more um, patient. Uh, to wait for a reply and not keep bombarding you in different ways to, to get an answer. Um, okay, so those are some things about boundaries. You've got to set those boundaries for yourself, for your work environment, physically, for your work space and time. 
by having conversations with people or putting out some kinds of uh, auto messages and and make sure that you don't have outside distractions like the TV or or the kinds of noises that you can control going on. All right. Um, so let's go into time. How are we doing on time? Let's go into time management. So a couple of things about time management. Uh, again, think about what your time frame is going to be for doing your work, separating the work from the personal. Uh, you know, how much time are you going to have in the morning between getting up, dealing with the kids, you know, showering, um, doing any kind of self-care exercise or meditation. I do highly recommend that you start your day with one or both of those things. You've got to start off your day with something that gives back to you, something that lifts you up, something that gives you energy, physical or emotional, something that starts you off in a good space, okay, a good mind frame. Talk more about that in, in mindset in a moment. And then, you know, what time do you want to be ready to sit down and do your work? And stay within that bounds, really, really, just like, you know, you know, if you were a person who was pretty much on time for work, you know, you left a certain amount, of, you left at a certain time to get there on time, you want to maintain a schedule, maintain a schedule, even though you're at work. So set those boundaries, your time frames for getting ready in the morning and then being ready to start work. And then your time frames for how long you're going to work before you take any kind of break, checking on anybody in the household, like kids that you might need to get up and move around, for example. And then, you know, when am I getting started back in again? When am I completing for my day, leaving work and then, you know, leaving the work behind and then going on with with what's in my personal time? after that. So make sure that you separate personal from work and that you figure out these work time uh, uh, blocks for you, time blocks for personal, time blocks for uh, the work. Make sure you've got an appropriate time block for your sleep as well. Again, rejuvenation, highly, highly important. That's self-care. If you're not getting enough sleep, you're not going to be thinking well. You're not going to be productive. You're more likely to make mistakes. You're more likely to be on edge and, um, you know, be be overreactionary to things. Uh, I've been sending tips out about ways to stay more calm and focus and at peace throughout the week. I'll talk uh, a little bit more about thought management as well. But um, so set a schedule. And then come up with a to-do list every single day. Maybe it's at the end of the day what, what you want to accomplish tomorrow. Maybe it's the first thing in the morning. Maybe right when you sit down, the first thing that you do is figure out, okay, what do I need to work on today? Maybe uh, set your agenda first before you check the email. Know what your main things are that you want to cover. And, and then check your email to see is there anybody else's needs or agendas that you need to add to your own. Sometimes you don't. You think you do, but you really don't. Think about really what's yours to do and what's not your responsibility. Think about when, if you need to pull in what somebody else is requesting to your to-do list. Think about you know, how, how urgent or important that is. And once you've got your list of your things or, or somebody else's things that, that um, are expected of you, then you want to rate them. You want to rate them in order of importance or urgency. And, uh, you know, there's some information online. Um, uh, I forget whose it is, but um, uh, the, uh, the graph of, of importance for things. But, you know, things that have some kind of immediate time uh, limit to them or, or time sensitivity to it. Uh, well, you know, what's your priorities? What's what's the most important is in terms of ha uh, the impact that it's going to have on the work or other people? Uh, how it's going to move the needle for your own, if maybe it's your own business, how it's going to move the needle for that? And think about, uh, you know, what what things are most important to, to work on first. There's a book called Eat That Frog that helps you to kind of figure out um, and make sure that you're... Um, appropriately assessing the the urgency importance 
the allocation of the things that you're choosing to work on first versus later. Uh, and then time management is really priority management. So this is all about setting the priorities for the things that you have on your list. And what are time sensitive? What, what are things you have to do first before you can do something else on the list? So something further down the line is dependent on this thing being done first. So you got to get that done first or that somebody else, they can't do what they need to do until they get this thing from you. So that might be something that's uh, higher in the priority list. Or again, something that's urgent, that's really related to uh, a strong negative repercussion occurring unless you get that done on time. Sorry, somebody is messaging me and it just turned off my screen. <clears throat> again. Okay, so I didn't want to do this on my phone. Uh, all right. Now, another thing is time blocking. If you haven't heard of time blocking, you need to know about time blocking. So you need to move things from your to-do list to a calendar. Unless it's on the calendar, it's less likely to get done, and you're not appropriately assessing the time frame of getting things done based on the number of things you have on your list to get done for the, the given time period. So you've got to make sure that you're taking things from your to-do list and putting them in a space on your calendar, a particular block of time on your calendar. When are you going to do this thing? Figure out how much time uh, it's likely to take you or to how much time you have to allocate to something. And also know that usually something will take t at least 20% longer <laughs> to do than we think it will take to do. Unless it's something that's very repetitive, we've done it numerous, numerous, numerous times over and over. We are pretty good at making sure we, you know, it's the same amount of time that it takes to do that that thing every time. Other than that, you're kind of having to do an educated guess. So you have your list, you have the importance, then maybe actually before you put it on your calendars, give it a time estimate of getting it done or how much time you're willing to or can allocate on getting it done. Um, also know it's really important to, to create a boundary around the time of completing that task because there is a time management principle that uh, I think it's the Pareto, no, the 80-20 is the Pareto. Um, I can't think of it right now. It also begins with a P. Uh, that, that is that the task will expand or shrink to fit the time allotted. So if you've only got five minutes to do something and that's, you know, you think that's realistic, you're going to be more uh, focused and efficient with doing it and getting it done in that five minutes. If that five-minute thing, if you give that five-minute thing 15 minutes to do, it's going to be interesting how something happens that, that distracts you or makes that time expand. Often it's something like perfectionism. So you got to be careful of that. <clears throat> but if you give 15 minutes to do something to something that you really could do good enough in five minutes, you're going to find that you're taking up that whole 15 minutes working on it. Or you're going to get distracted by something else that's not really important. It's not even oftentimes on your list or it's further down your list. <clears throat> so be very focused. If something pops into your head, they're like, oh, I need to remember to do that. Let me just do it right now while I'm thinking of it. No, 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 no. Trust me on this. It's something I've really had to be focused on for myself. Have a side sheet of paper or, again, your, your to-do list and jot it down. When it comes to your head, jot it down because it takes anywhere from averaging 7 to 20 minutes, depending on the task, to get refocused back in the same state of focus and efficiency, productivity that you were in before you got distracted from that task. So stay focused on that task because it takes longer to do when you stop doing it and have to come back to it. <clears throat> Then put it on a space on your calendar, and then you're going to be able to see whether the allocation of the amount of tasks that you have that you want to get done in a certain time frame is realistic or not. 
once you put them on the calendar in a certain time frame, you said, hey, I can get this, 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 and this, and this done in an hour. And then you say, okay, this will probably take, you know, 10 minutes. This will probably take about 20 minutes. It might take, uh, you know, 20 minutes for this. And, and then you try to put that in that one hour and you go, ooh, doesn't fit. So what do I need to adjust? The time that I'm allocating to spend on something or I need to expand out beyond that hour to get all of these things done. All right, so things are not as likely to get done if you don't put them in a time block on your calendar. So super, super important. First, come up with the list. What has to be on that list of yours? What has to be on that list of uh, from others? Prioritize those things. Importance and urgency and impact. Uh, sometimes the time of day that you have to do something also comes into play. Sometimes location comes into play, less so right now because we are uh, self-quarantining. But if you're watching this sometime later and we're no longer in this situation, uh, then uh, location might also come into play with that. And then time frame that you anticipate or you're willing to give to any task, and then put those on a time block on your calendar. And, uh, you know, if you've got something like Google Calendar, you could be using using that or you can use a paper calendar, you know, that has those time blocks and then uh, put those those tasks in there. And then you'll be able to know whether it's realistic or whether you have to allocate, reallocate the, the amount of time you're spending to something or whether you need to reallocate when uh, you're doing that in your schedule. OK, um, Oh, Stephen Covey. Yes, thank you, Tracy. It was Stephen Covey uh, that has the information about prioritizing things. And there's uh, there's a quadrant, um, time time quadrant, I think it is. So you can look look up Stephen Covey uh, for that. All right, let's go into thought and emotion management or mindset management. I could spend so much time on this, but I'm just going to give you a couple quick tidbits here. <clears throat> First of all, you have to accept the situation as it is, right? The 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 more we resist it, the more uh, we just stay uh, stuck in a state of anger or resentment or or you know whatever that negative emotion is, and and we're not rolling up our sleeves and diving in and and just doing what needs to be done. <clears throat> The, the harder we're going to make it for ourselves, the, the more behind we're going to get, uh, the less efficient we're going to be. So just, you know, we've got to accept this is a situation. We don't know how long it's going to last. There's a lot of uncertainty right now, but you got to anticipate, you know, it's that minimum of two weeks uh, that started this past Monday for, you know, schools being closed, et cetera. But um, it's probably going to go longer than that. So uh, I'm I think, you know, again, they're, we're rolling things out as we're getting more data, more information. So <clears throat> accept it, do the best you can with it, right? And take on that positive mind frame. <clears throat> uh, I mentioned this before. If you're an employee, remember that the survival of that company and your ability to keep your job and keep that income coming in and helping your coworkers still also have a job to continue to do a place to eventually go back to uh, is being productive with your time, making sure the time that you are being paid to do the work that your employer is expecting you to do, that you are doing it that you are taking care of setting up these space boundaries and these town by time boundaries, and you're doing the best that you can. You're being the best worker that you can. Because you know what? There's a lot of people out right now, they don't have a job. Uh, or they're furloughed indefinitely, right? <clears throat> There's nothing coming in. And they would wish, they would hope that they would be in your position right now, okay? So that's not shaming. Um, that's just, you know, helping you to kind of put some perspective on it. So... <clears throat> Um, be productive, know that if you were paying yourself, right, if this was your own business and you were having to pay yourself, would you feel good about paying yourself for what you accomplished in, in a given hour, in a given day, in a given week, right? Did you earn what you were being paid? Now, if you got your own business, it's, uh, you know, you're closer to the vest with that, right? It's It's more real for you that your time is money 
And again, this is the, the survival of your company, whether all you're doing right now is is marketing and trying to find uh, some some new clients, trying uh, you're shifting what you're doing and what you're offering to people. You're going in a new route to find where there's still opportunity or people who are willing to pay for what you what you can provide. <clears throat> then you know time is money. So be efficient with whatever you're you're working on to find some you know find some business. <clears throat> um, remember that your you're at home, but you're technically at work, right? So you've got to get into that mind, same, mind frame. I'm at home, but I am on the job and I am working. A um, couple of other things about, you know, our, our mindset. I, I mentioned before about self-care. You're, when you're stressed, when you're anxious, when you're overwhelmed, you're not going to be as productive. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. Make sure that you, you know, uh, you're reaching out, that you've got support systems, that you are still finding ways to communicate with other people, especially if you're, um, you know, home alone, right? Like me, I, I, you know, there's nobody else here but my beautiful little Trixie dog. Uh, so, you know, it's important that you reach out. We have we have the technology to still be able to be communicating. I, I actually don't like the the phrase social distancing. We're physical distancing, distancing, but we can still be social. There's many ways to do that. Even you know, going outside, going for a work walk, but keeping your distance from other people. I've heard stories about people. My neighborhood's not like this, but, uh, you know, sitting out their chairs on their front lawn and, you know, everybody talking across the street from each other. And, you know, maybe you got a cocktail there or something. Uh, so, you know, you can still socialize with your neighbors that way from a distance, uh, especially, you know, if it's if it's good weather out. Um, you know, FaceTiming. So you get that visual aspect. There's many different uh, ways to do that video talking. So you've got FaceTime, you've got Zoom, you've got Facebook uh, video chat, uh, <clears throat> uh, Google Hangouts. There's lots of, of, of great options for you. So take advantage of that as well. Um, <clears throat> make sure you're getting plenty of rest. Make sure that you're doing some kind of exercise. You're drinking plenty of water. You're eating well also. Uh, really, really be cautious about establishing unhealthy behaviors or, or relying too much on unhealthy or less than healthy types of, of resources to entertain you. So that's things like TV, right? If you, if you got a family there, take advantage of this time. Again, there's benefits to having this time with our families, you know, sort of locked away in the house. Start to talk to each other, right? Play games together. Play board games. Do you have any board games in the house? Um, you know, pull those out and play those and communicate and have dinner together. Like, you know, not rushing all over the place and doing the sports and all that. Really start to connect. I mean, this is a great opportunity to, to connect more deeply with people. Even if they're not there with us in person, we can have conversations, you know. You should be able to, you know, call up a new person every single day they haven't talked in a while and just check in and see how they're doing. And, you know, maybe they're, they're lonely and needing some company as well. So great opportunity for doing some deeper connection, but also watch the habits. Don't be binge. You know, I hear all these stories about people like binge watching, you know, this show, that show, Netflix, whatever. Um, so really, really be cautious of that, right? Uh, because your environment what you're taking in, what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're reading is all impacting your mindset and your your resiliency and your ability to think effectively, make the decisions that you need to make to, um, you know, help yourself get through this time, phys um, you know, economically and emotionally, etc. cetera. Um, watch the alcohol. Uh, if you smoke, watch the smoking. Make sure you're not increasing that. And this, this is a great time to actually stop smoking. You know, instead of having to go out to the store all the time, don't buy the cartons. <clears throat> um, it's a great time to stop smoking and, and talk to me about that because I have a really great success rate with people, helping people to stop smoking. And I can work with people virtually. So this, it, this isn't hurting me in terms of my ability to work with clients. 
all my current clients were doing everything by phone right now. So it's great. <laughs> you know, I'm already set up to do that. I've already been doing that for years. Uh, so if you're smoking, quit. You know, this is a respiratory illness, COVID-19. And so you are more susceptible to getting it or having it be much worse if you do get it, if you are a smoker. So it's a great time to stop smoking. Reach out to me uh, to talk to me about how I could help you to do that. So the alcohol, smoking, eating. Eating is another big one. Reach out to me if you're having a hard time. You're doing a lot of emotional eating. Um... Yeah, I can help you with that as well. But, you know, make sure you're not using food for distraction, entertainment, relaxation, uh, making yourself feel better uh, because, well, I don't need to tell you why. You know why. Uh, is there anything else that you're doing too much of or that has negative side of effects to doing it? So you don't want to have a short-term win for a long-term or more negative impactful lose. Create win-win resources for yourself to reward, soothe, distract, uh, entertain, etc. But also make sure you're not relying on one thing too much and that you're spreading it out and you're utilizing a variety of things to help you to soothe, distract, entertain, and feel better. Okay, so that's all I have for today. I don't know how much time. It's about 30 minutes or so that I think I've gone. Hopefully these tips were helpful to you. I didn't see any other comments coming through, any questions that people had. If you do have any before I end today, just go ahead and type them in so that I can answer before I finish today. If you're watching this video later and you have any questions, just type them in. I'll be going back to some of my videos that I've, I've been doing over the week and seeing if there's additional questions. You can also email me direct or you can Facebook message me directly. If we're not friends yet, then obviously you have to, you know, friend me first and then I'll friend you back and uh, and then you can message and I'll see the message. Um, so you can also email me Lisa at the mind training center.com. That's my website, the mind training center.com. If you need or want some more private uh, assistance or coaching around working from home or helping you with what's going on in your business right now, helping you with stress management, resiliency, if you're having a hard time sleeping, if you're having any of these, uh, engaging in more of these negative behaviors and you want to stop that, then reach out to me and we'll talk about uh, how I might be able to do that for you or uh, another resource that might be better for you. So uh, I'm not the right fit for everybody. And if I'm not, I'll let you know. I'll be honest with you. And I'll, But I'll try to direct you to a resource that is more effective. I've got a really wide network of, of people. So if there's anything else related to working from home, any help you need with like maybe social media, uh, which I don't do, or um, <clears throat> business continuity planning, which I don't do, just let me know what your need is, and uh, and I'll share my resources, my, my uh, network with you, uh, so I can help you in any way possible, okay? We're all in this together, so be kind to each other. Be kind to yourself. Um, learn, adapt, uh, change, and, you know, you can come out on the other side of this better than when you came in. Take care, everyone.